Ocean games. Yeah, these games belong in the ocean. So when you think of licensed movie tie-in games, what company pops in your head? LJN, THQ, Sunsoft? Well, before all of them, there was one king of licensed movie games that churned them out faster than Grant McDonald puts out more installments of Ram Ranch. That company was Ocean Software. Ocean started out making clones of arcade games to 80s microcomputers like the Commodore 64 and ended up making official licensed ports of games later on, including a Nintendo-approved version of Donkey Kong. But later around 1986, their focus shifted to movie tie-in games. Now, movie games were nothing new. Atari had made plenty of movie games, including this little bastard, but the game industry crash never happened in the UK, where the Brits were happily playing away at their movie games, 90% of which were made by Ocean. Back then, movie licenses weren't near as expensive as they are now, especially for movies that weren't even out yet because they hadn't become popular yet. So Ocean could buy a license for these movies for a fairly small amount, and if the movie became popular in the box office, they would make a killing off the game. It was a risky move, and sometimes it didn't pay off, but when it did, it did. Their biggest financial success would be with their RoboCop game, which I reviewed the Spectrum version of in my last video. This game got put on everything. The NES, the arcade, Amiga, Atari ST, Game Boy, PC, Apple II, Commodore 64. Whew! and more. I was gonna review the Commodore 64 version for this game, but holy shit balls! they made this game extremely hard. There's so many freaking guys shooting at you at once, your health gets drained extremely quick. You do get some health pickups for killing enemies, but it's completely RNG if they'll show up at all. And on top of all that, you get one life, no continues, and you have a time limit. All I could think was, why is this game so unfair and difficult? Well, it turns out on the C64 version, this was completely intentional. The game is unfinished. They never got around to making level three of the game. It's there, but not done. So instead of delaying the game to get it finished, they made the game insanely hard and impossible to beat, so you couldn't even get to level three. In fact, Level 2 has an intentionally short time limit that makes it so it's impossible to finish the level. However, the game is so broken that you can glitch through a wall and skip most of the level and then finish it. And what do you see when you get to level 3? This! Welcome to the Pixel Puke Zone, Population Robocop. You know, it's common now for companies to release a broken, unfinished game and call it good, but it's really surprising to see this shit happened even back then before day one patches were a thing. When you bought a game and it was a broken piece of shit, it was just always a broken piece of shit, and you were out 20 bucks or whatever. So now that I've set the stage and you know the quality of games that we're dealing with here, let's take a deep dive into the sea of shit that is Ocean Game. Let's start where I left off last episode on the ZX Spectrum. Don't worry, we won't be here long. One day a giant meteor will take us all out. But until then, here's Cobra. Okay, that gun does not make any sense. Oh, it actually looks like that, huh? It's still ugly, though. <laughs> Ah, right up there with Beethoven. Now, I haven't seen the movie Cobra, but does Stallone run around town at night headbutting people and getting attacked by baby carriages full of bombs? If he does, I really need to see this movie. And now he's jumping around on a jungle gym with rockets and knives being thrown at him. One hit death, by the way. But would you expect any less from a Spectrum game? Headphone check. <laughs> Game under. That is the best thing I've seen all day. We're making a shirt out of that one. I think that's enough out of this game. If I want to play a Stallone game, I'll play Italian Stallion on the Game Boy Advance. Highlander. Now, this is considered Ocean's worst movie game they ever made. We'll see about that. You and a bro are fighting each other 1v1 with swads, and you keep hitting him with the swad till you chop his head off. Or more realistically, he chops your head off and you quit the game out of frustration. It's hard to even tell if you're doing anything, really. If it weren't for the health bar in the bottom, I wouldn't even know if my attacks are landing or not, and half the time they don't. It feels like no matter what you try to do, you can't really get anything to happen. And if I do hit him, I don't know how I did it, and that seems to be the general consensus of this game. You can't really tell if you're doing anything or not, and the controls only work half the time. Well, there can be only one thing you do with this game. Throw it in the garbage. Navy SEALs on the Commodore 64. I've never even heard of this movie. 
movie, but it was apparently a Charlie Sheen movie from 1990. From what I gather, you're supposed to put bombs on these military crates, and you need to find them all before the timer runs out. Easier said than done, though, because this is another one-hit death game, and there's enemies hiding every which way, and you can only shoot one direction. You can't shoot up or down or anything. You can only shoot forward. So that makes it really hard to actually shoot anything. By the time I get done crawling off this crate, this guy's done already shot me. So you find yourself having to try to figure out some kind of special path where you won't get shot at. Man, I cannot stand games that have a one-hit death. There's no reason for it other than to make the game unneedlessly difficult. And yeah, you could say, oh, well, they wanted to make the game more realistic. It's a fucking video game. Fun is more important than realism. If the realism hurts the fun, get rid of the realism. You want a realistic game? You really want a realistic game? How about a game where you die from cancer? How about a game where you're put in jail for not paying your taxes? How about a game where you become homeless because your 9 to 5 job doesn't pay the rent? That's realism, baby. And you can call the game Die. The game is called Die. And get from software to make it. Fund it, start a Kickstarter, whatever. We're making Die. Short Circuit. Number 5. Stuck in Shit Game. Shit. Defecation. Feces. Fecal matter. Damn, why does every game I play recently want to take an ice pick to my ears? I don't have a lot to say about this one because I never could figure it out. This might be one of those games where you need the whole keyboard and RetroArch only lets you use the joystick because all I could do was examine things and I never did find anything. Hot damn, this music is fucking me in the ear with no lube. I do give them kudos for trying to do music from the movie, though. I found one of the other robots, but I never could figure out how to get past him. I tried to go to the left side of the screen, and I got captured and disassembled. You would think I'd be able to go through this door, but I never could figure out how. So I chalked it up to this is a game you need the keyboard for. So I can't really review this one. It gave me a good laugh, though. Next, let's go over to the Amiga with Red Heat. And holy shit, this music sounds like male stream music. Uh, this ain't a porn game, is it? Yeah, this there ain't nothing weird about this. It's a bunch of guys in a sauna, naked, beating the shit out of each other while rocks fall on their head. Does this happen in Red Heat? Is it a porn movie? Oh, it's a, that's an ass! That is an ass! That is an ass! Ass confirmed! Oh, wait, this is an Arnold movie? They made Arnold a Russian man? Ya jiggy bricky hard boss. This is the most homoerotic game I've ever seen since Metal Gear Solid 4. Well, I guess I better review it. Well, the punching is okay, but it's hard to dodge anything, especially these rocks falling from the sky, and you can get caught up in a stun lock where they're steadily beating the shit out of you. I never got to the end of this level, but I want to believe the whole game is just this, beating a bunch of naked men to death. Oh, check out Stallone over here. Arnold is beating up Stallone. What more could I say about this game that it isn't already saying itself? <laughs> My review of this is, if you want a game that's got a whole bunch of buff naked men, you could do a lot worse than red heat. Now let's play Batman the movie on Amiga. Oh, my right ear really likes this song. That was something with some Amiga soundtracks. They had weird stereo separation. Oh, there we go. Wait, what the fuck? I'm Batman. So this game was packaged with a lot of Amigas. You could buy an Amiga 500 in the Batman pack and get this game. The only attack you have is your Batarang, which you can only throw straight forward, while all the bad guys can shoot wherever the hell they want to. But nobody would ever accuse an ocean game of being fair. You use your grappling hook to go up to the higher levels. I wasn't able to make it very far in this game because I really don't know where I'm supposed to go. And every time I make a little bit of progress, I end up getting killed. Then I gotta start all over again. It wouldn't be so bad if everything didn't all look the same. Overall, it's okay. I guess it would be okay if you had enough time to spend on it. Like, if you had an Amiga and this was your game, you'd be more apt to try to finish it. But it just didn't hold my attention. I'm not a cat. You can't just dangle some keys in front of me and make me entertained. Playing this does make me want to watch the movie, though. Let's move over to the NES with the Addams Family. And my god, you think Fester's Quest is bad? Wait till you play this shit. The game's at least 
nice enough to give you hints. Otherwise, you'd have no idea how to play this damn game. The game is kind of set up like a Metroidvania where it's all one big level with a bunch of locked doors and you got to get keys to progress. The object is to find all your family members and I think when you find them, you can play as them. I'm not sure. The game cranks up the difficulty pretty early on and immediately starts hitting you with grade A bullshit. Oh, fu are you kidding me? Oh, so I go through this crypt trying to see if there's anything I can collect. Oh, it's just more money for more points. Uh, you know what? You know what? No, fuck that. We're going through this door. What? Oh my fuck. Okay, I see how this game is now. You gonna do me like that, huh? Well, bring it, daddy. I love it when you spank me. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got you figured out, game. Yeah, go ahead with the little spikes. And we've collected a bone. Boner get. Boner. And then there's these guys that throw shit at you from the windows and are really hard to dodge. Well, I found the key. Let's get in the house. Oh, you mother! Man, whoever designed this game really was a little shit. I hope your house burns down and your wife leaves you because she can't be married to a man whose house burnt down. That's gonna come alive and kill me. Yep. Ah, nice. Well, there's nothing in here but money bags anyway, so what's the point of even coming in here? Ah, no bad platformer would be complete without an ice physics room. And that was my last life and last continue. At least this game gives you lives and continues, so I can't fault it for that. But I can sure fault it for this shitty ice room. So in this part, you're supposed to get in these spots where you can jump to dodge the snowballs, but the collision detection is very fucked up on the ceiling. Sometimes you'll jump normally or sometimes you'll hit an invisible ceiling. Like right there, I was in the same spot. And these platforms can go to hell. They give you a really short amount of time for you to jump on each one. You gotta time it perfect. You can't be a millisecond off. So I saved Wednesday, but now I gotta get back off this platform. I gotta go all the way back the way I came. Come on, come on. Oh, I made the platform. Oh wait, I'm not gonna make it. Oh! That's enough out of this game. Kiss my hairy gray ass. Platoon. Now, Sunsoft published the NES version, but Ocean made it. There's also a C64 version of this game. In fact, some C64s were bundled with this game. But we're playing the NES one because if I play one more microcomputer game, I'm gonna puke. This game has got some really cool music thanks to David Whittaker. <laughs> As you can imagine, the C64 version sounds even better. That's more than what I can say about the game itself, though. If you have no idea what's going on, you're gonna run around endlessly like you're blind as a Viagra addict, trying to find a way out of this jungle maze. This is one of those games that could have really used a map or you need to draw one out yourself. What you're supposed to do is find some explosives hidden in the maze, and then you gotta take them to a bridge and then blow that bridge up. I found the explosives, but I never found the bridge. I wandered through this godforsaken maze for lord knows how long until I was finally sick of it. At least the enemies aren't very hard. They're a bigger pushover than a cow on rollerblades. I would know. And you kill them in one hit, so it's like, it's nothing. So if you did draw yourself a map or knew where the explosives and the bridge were, this game would probably be kind of easy. From what I've seen, the levels after this are completely different. One of them has you running around in a tunnel, then you've got a shooting stage, and then this pseudo top-down thing. So there might be a decent game in here for you if you're able to keep going, but I couldn't keep going. There's somebody that can play this game, but it ain't me. It ain't me. The Untouchables. Yeah, the most obvious joke would be the unplayable. But the game honestly isn't that bad. The game starts you off with a shooting gallery where you have to shoot two times and then reload. You have to kill a certain amount of enemies before the time limit. I feel like the cursor is a little bit slow, but then again, my mind is a little bit slow. My only gripe is he reloads his gun by pumping it, but the gun is semi-automatic and only holds two rounds. The hell kind of gun is this? Then there's this level where 
where you're shooting a bunch of bottles over and over. You know, I can't help but feel like these levels would be a lot more fun with the zapper. Light gun support would have made this game a lot better. Kind of a missed opportunity. I wonder if there's some drunk idiot out there who tried to play duck hunt with a real gun. Like they're freaking hammered out of their mind and instead of grabbing the zapper, they grabbed a real gun and then blew a hole in their TV. I mean, there's a few guns out there that kind of look like the zapper. I mean, if you were drunk enough, I wish I could find somebody that could make me a holster for a zapper. That would be cool. And then finally, you have this one stage where you gotta kill the guy in the gray hat. You don't run very fast, but you jump faster than somebody who just played the screamer maze for the first time. Look at that hoppity hop. He hops like a man possessed. Yeah, get after it, Ness. Yeah, his name is Ness, no relation. And then it just repeats the same three stages over again. So it's kind of got that arcade deal going on of you kind of just play it until you're bored of it. But you know what? I dig it. But this next one, the only thing I dig is a hole to bury it in. Hook. Oh man, this game. Have you ever accidentally figured out a puzzle in a game or ran around blindly trying to figure out what to do and you just happen to stumble upon it? I wish that would have happened to me playing Hook. I stumbled around this freaking game for an hour trying to figure out what the hell I'm supposed to do. One thing I've noticed about ocean games, they hate the basic idea of a side-scrolling platformer that just goes from left to right and you just keep going till you hit the goal. You know, like a normal sane person makes? No, no, no. They have to make it complicated. In their games, you have to walk around in the huge piss maze of Shitterbond looking for the five magic turds of King Fuck Yourself. That's at least 80% of their games. It can't just be a simple game. Oh, no. Well, in this game, as far as I can tell, you have to collect every item in the level and then go to the exit. Now, you've got a knife that you can kill enemies with, but then you pick up this metal detector and it disables your knife. So I gotta just let this guy hit me. That's just bullshit. That's like if Mario collected a mushroom and now he can't jump anymore. Or if my dick got bigger and now it doesn't fit in any holes. Then there's this water level where it could be a lot worse than it is. My main problem is this anxiety-inducing music it has. Ah, diminished and chromatic scales. The worst scales in music. This game is like when you take a shit and the shit is so big that it splashes in the water and the water goes up your rectum. It's like a natural bidet. All right, last NES game before we move on to Super Nintendo, and it's Jurassic Park. Now, the music in this game was done by Jonathan Dunn, and it's really freaking good. So this game is another classic ocean scavenger hunt. You gotta find all the dinosaur eggs and then go to the exit. But honestly, the game isn't that bad, at least on these levels. The gun is kind of weird. What is it even supposed to be? Some kind of bazooka? And it doesn't shoot directly in the center of you. It like shoots at an offset. In addition to the dinosaur eggs, sometimes you gotta get key cards. Mother key cards. Then you can go inside the buildings and get the rest of the eggs. Now, like I said, this part of the game isn't bad. The part that's bad is this. These triceratops are trying to run over you and you gotta avoid them. And you've got somebody else with you and you gotta make sure they don't get run over too. It's a really aggravating part of the game and it only gets worse from here. Because in another level, you gotta fight a T-Rex and the only way to shoot him is in the head. And his hitbox for his head is so damn small. And even then, sometimes you're shots don't even connect when you obviously shot him. And you gotta keep this other guy from getting eaten by him. Ugh. This part, it's just, it's just bad, man. He goes so fast, you go so slow, he can kill you in one hit. It's bullshit. It may be easier to fight a real T-Rex than to fight this some bitch. I really wanted to like this game too, but because of this shit right here, I gotta say, don't play this piece of crap. Instead, go dry hump a cactus. You'll have more fun. But what about Jurassic Park on the Super Nintendo? Well, now your bazooka thing is a cattle prod. You still gotta look for dinosaur eggs, but this time you've got an open world to run around in. You got tons of different weapons to choose from and you'll need them to take care of all the raptors and spitters you'll find. The game pretty much has a set path it wants you to go on and it will give you hints from time to time, but in all god honesty, you will need a strategy guide to play this game. Shout out to Starfighter76 who has made a map of literally every video game in the world at this point.
When you enter a building, you're greeted by this first-person perspective that's very akin to Wolfenstein 3D in that there's no floor or ceiling, just walls. Believe it or not, this game actually predates Doom by two months. Jurassic Park SNES came out in October of 93, and Doom came in December. And I gotta say, even as jank as it is, it still runs better than Doom on the Super Nintendo did. These first-person levels all have this eerie music to them, and the only thing you hear other than that is the sound of the dinosaur. So it's got a bit of a spooky factor to it. I'm not gonna lie, people. I like this game. I liked it as a kid. I like it now. Even with all its jank, all its difficulty, and as cryptic as it is, I can see past that and have fun with it. But there is one thing that kills this game for a lot of people, and it does for me too. This is a very long game, and they expect you to finish it all in one sitting. Because of that, there's no save feature, and this game really bad needs a save feature. I mean, thanks to emulation, you got save states, of course. But on your butt, on the couch, playing your Super Nintendo, you didn't have it. Unless you had one of those funky game saver peripherals, which I used to have. It was a little battery-powered rig that let you have save states, but you would lose them once you took the batteries out, which I forgot to do for 10 years and ruined the damn thing. Anyway, that's all I got to say about Jurassic Park for the Super Nintendo. Play it, but on emulator so you can save. And make sure you get a strategy guide. You're gonna need it. Mighty Max. Oh my god. This might be the worst game I played for this video. This was a steaming pile of chicken shit. Again, same typical ocean game. Collect things, go to the exit. Only this time, you've got to pick them up one by one and then take them to an exit portal. Dear god, what is this jump? Your gun only shoots one direction and when you jump to try to hit an enemy that's higher than you, you shoot up like a fat guy that farted his way to the moon and can't aim for shit. This jump is ridiculous. I thought something was wrong with my emulator for a second. And you would think these ricocheting bullets would actually hit something. No, they never do. They don't even kill anything anyway. They just stun things. You know what this all feels like? It feels like you gave a hyperactive child five monster energy drinks and a gun. Well, I found one of the items I'm supposed to collect, but it doesn't help that every single enemy in the area is trying to kill me. It's like after they find you, they keep following you to the bitter end. And since you can't kill them, you can only stun them. They're just always there, being a little bitch. Oh, nice. You can't jump while holding the item. The one thing I would really need to do, because I found the exit portal and it's above me. So what the hell am I supposed to do now? The exit portal is on the platform above me and I can't reach it. And before you say, try throwing it on the balloon, I tried that. It didn't work. Oh, apparently this kills stuff. Okay. Doesn't get me any closer to my goal. It's like every single one of these platforms are just out of reach. I am at a complete loss. I don't know what this game wants me to do. You know what I am going to do? Go to E621 and look at some lichen rocks. But after that, I'm deleting this game. The Adams Family Pugsley Scavenger Hunt. Guys, take a wild fucking guess what you do in this game. The same thing that you do in the last four games I reviewed. Go through non-linear levels and collect items. We need to come up with a name for this. We should call it Ocean-like. Any game where you run around in confusing levels trying to find items and then go to a goal? Yeah, that's an Ocean-like. In this game, there was a lot of levels I couldn't really make any progress in. I wonder if it's like if I need an item or something to get past those levels or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. I want to stop playing these games. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have anything interesting to say about it. It's the same shit, different sprites. It's like they had this tired old formula that they kept recycling over and over and making tons of different games with it with licenses. And I for one am sick of it. Let's play something different. There has to be something different. Let me look here. Uh, uh, hey, get, out, get, out of the, get out of the way. Uh, okay. I got something different. Apparently, Ocean made a mascot platformer. And his name is... His name is Mr. Nuts. You're gonna love Mr. Nuts. It's a good sign of what Mr. Nuts is all about when you've got these trees that look like a gaping asshole and a dick.
You know, for kids. Oh, look at here, you can make him dance. Dance your nuts off, Mr. Nuts. Oh, look what they did. They took the dick tree and then mirrored it. It's a double dick tree. <sighs> okay, Stu, take this review seriously for once. That... That, that, that's goatsy. That's just straight up a goatsy. Is that what I think it is? Aw, oh, shit, Nintendo's gonna be pissed. So Mr. Nuts is finally what I've been asking for, a simple, no bullshit platformer. Man, Ocean must have been so upset over the fact the levels made sense and the graphics don't all look the same and there was no items to collect. This game had to be hard for them to make. It's just you walk from one spot to the other spot, avoid some enemies, and get to the goal. That's what a 2D platformer is supposed to be. You don't have to overcomplicate the shit. That's not to say I don't have some problems with it. I hate these fucking enemies that throw these yellow balls at you. They throw them so fast and there's no way to kill them. If those enemies weren't in the game, this game would actually be a lot easier. And you would think, oh, it's got these cutesy graphics. It's gonna be an easy little babby game. Well, babby game it is not. Oh, for fuck's sake, these yellow ball bastards. It seems like all I'm fucking with today is nuts and balls. But I'm not gonna make a witty comment like Mr. Nuts sucks my nuts or something like that because this game is okay. I don't hate it. Interesting note is that it got a sequel, but it was exclusive to the Amiga. This one had an overworld and a story. A story about chickens from outer space appearing in Thunder Force 3 ships. It's got an interesting little mechanic that if you get hit, your hit point leaves your body and you can try to pick it back up and get it back but i found it kind of detrimental in that you'll get hit and then try to chase your hit point down and then get hit some more it's not a bad game either in fact i think it's kind of good but i do hate that it's got up to jump all of those amiga and microcomputer games had that overall mr nuts doesn't suck nuts last game everybody and who boy it's water world remember water world neat either a crappy movie about water gets a game by a company called Ocean. What could possibly go ah. Boys get ready for pure disappointment, not from the game, but from me. It's okay. It's not the greatest game in the world. It's not the best thing or worst thing I've ever played. It's just okay. So what you do is you eliminate all the enemies on screen, then you dive down in the water to collect some treasure and you can collect as much or as little as you you want there's really no penalty for that then you got to save the people being kidnapped by the smokers which are the bad guys in this movie the smokers are the bad guys what are you the surgeon general and then you got this side scrolling part where you got to kill all the enemies that are on the map and you know it works just fine the weapon works fine the controls work just fine it's fine there's nothing bad for me to say about it i'm really surprised you would have thought a game about water world wouldn't be no count but this is actually kind of count it's it's not great, but for an ocean game? This is competent. Waterworld gets a fucking pass, man. It's definitely better than the movie, and it makes me want to go fishing. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all the ocean games I can stand. Oh, there's more. There's plenty more, but I left them out because, oh my god, they're just... Some of them are just boring to the point to where there's nothing to say about them, and some of them have been reviewed by better reviewers than me. So with that, we close the video. Now, if you liked this, and you like what I do, and want to support what I do, you can check me out on the Patreon. I've got a $1 tier and a $5 tier, and on that $5 tier, you get to see the videos before anybody else and join the Discord, too. I've also got a Redbubble merch store where you can buy a bunch of cool stuff. But that's gonna do it for now. My name's Stuart K. Riley, and I am out of here. Elden Ring is a shitty game. <laughs>